Hey everybody, Paul Sizer here from the Print Center in the College of Fine Arts at Western Michigan University. Um, in this video today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about how you set up files for printing that are images that are going to be printed to sheets of paper. So in the Print Center, we have basically two kinds of paper that you're going to be printing to. One of them is pre-cut sheets in various sizes that I'll go over in a second. And the other option is being printing to files that are um, uh, printing to paper that comes in a roll of varying widths and then whatever length you need to have. But for today's video, uh, I'm going to talk about how to set your file up properly so that um, there's zero guesswork as to the size that is to be printed at. And there's also zero guesswork as to where you want to have the image positioned on the paper, where you want to have borders, and where it needs to land on the piece of paper that's being uh, printed to. So in the print center we basically have essentially in stock at all times four different sizes of sheet paper. We've got eight and a half by eleven which is also called letter size. We have A3 paper which is uh, eleven point seven by sixteen and a half inches in size. We have tabloid size which is eleven by seventeen inches and we have super A3B paper which is 13 by 19 inches. So the best thing that you can do to ensure that when you send a photo print up here and that it's going to look exactly like you want it is to set your file up in a way where there's no question of the size of the paper, the size that the print is going to be, and where the image is going to be on that sheet of paper. So what I'm going to show you here is a quick way to set things up. This doesn't take very long, but it does take the guesswork out both on your end and our end. And that means that we can deliver a print that will be perfect and exact like, we, like what you want on the first try. So I'm in Photoshop right now. And we're taking a look at an image here that is a 12 inch square, 12 inches on each side. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I want to print this on at 100% size on a larger sheet of paper. So with the sizes that I just mentioned, the best option is going to be for me to print this to a Super A3B paper, which is the 13 by 19 inch size of paper. So the way I'm going to set this up is that I'm going to make a document and I'm going to make a new document that's going to be the exact size of that paper. So in Photoshop, I'm going to go ahead and hit Command N, which is for new and I get a new uh, dialog box here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just type in the exact size of the paper I'm gonna be printing on. So like I said, this is 13 by 19 inches. So I'm gonna type in 13 there. I'm gonna type in 19 in the height. Um, you can switch the orientation by toggling on these buttons here. So this is a portrait image, or I can toggle it to be um, landscape if I want to. And you can see that that changes the position of the 13 and 19 in here. When I go to landscape, it puts 19 up there, 13 down there. Doesn't make any difference. For this instance, I'm going to show you how to print it out on a, a portrait uh, orientation. Next thing that we want to make sure is that we are, that we have the proper resolution. So anytime that you're printing to paper, uh, the minimum resolution that you want to print to is 300 dpi. So I'm going to make sure that in my resolution that my resolution is at 300 dpi pixels per inch. Color mode, um, when you're printing to the printers in the print center, uh, you will be setting your color mode to RGB because that's what these printers are calibrated to print from and to print accurate color from. And that's all you need to set up. So 13 by 19, resolution of 300, RGB color mode, and we are all set to go. So I'm going to go ahead and hit create. And when I do that, I now have a brand new uh, untitled document here in Photoshop that is ready to take my image. And it is 13 inches by 19 inches. So we are all set to bring the image in. So I'm going to go back to my original image file that I have. And again, like I said, I know that this is 12 inches by 12 inches. So the way that I'm going to get this over to the new document is I'm going to go up to uh, select and select all. 
And the stuff that I'm showing you here, um, I'm going to go to the menus to show you where these things are, but these are also available through key commands. So again, you can do select all by just um, hitting command A, um, and that will select everything. So you can see the um, selection mark is now around here. Um, I can now go to edit, and I can copy, which is going to copy that to my pasteboard. Now I can go over to my new document, which I haven't uh, named yet. And I can go here and under edit, I can hit paste. And paste will automatically drop that into uh, this new document. Now as a default, Photoshop will usually, when it's pasting something into a document that's brand new, it will automatically and mathematically place this in dead center. It will find where it is in the center top to bottom, and it will find where it is in the center side to side. So if that doesn't make any difference to you, it will come in pretty much placed in the exact center of the new document that you've just made. And as we can see over here on my layers palette, we have our background, which is just the flat default white that Photoshop will generate for you. But we have a layer where my image is on. Um, and on that layer, I can use my direct select tool and I can grab this and move it around and it is floating on top of the background but it is its own layer so what this means is that i can take this image and i can place it wherever i want to on the 13 by 19 uh, image or the 13 by 19 um, document so if this is something where i'm wanting to place this in a certain way artistically like for instance if i want to have this placed in here so that it's slightly above optical center like up like this um, or if I'm interested in placing it so that I have an equidistant border on all sides except for the bottom and then there's more down here for whatever reason. Um, what I'm trying to get across to you is the fact that you have absolute control as to where this is going to be on this piece of paper. Now you may be printing this out, like I said, this is 12 inches by 12 inches. You may be printing this on a larger sheet of paper for the idea that you're going to cut this out or that you're going to trim it down to have equal borders all around. Um, that's perfectly fine. In that case, it really doesn't make a difference where you place it because you're probably going to measure things um, out so that you can have it. Um, if I know that this is 13 by 19, if I know it's 13 inches across and I know this is 12 inches across, um, I can additionally go over to my um, palettes over here. I can go to the rulers on the side there and I can put a guide right at five, at uh, a half of an inch go over here and put a, a line here at 12 and a half inches and I can put a guide up top here at a half of an inch as well and then at that point I can I can scoot that right up there and just use those guides as my um, reasoning for a, a something to align to so that I know that I have an equidistant border on all three sides of this and then if I'm trimming this out, I would just need to make a trim down here at a half of an inch past um, the 12 inches that I have. So again, if that's depending on where I've sat, so it would be at 13 right there. Okay. So now that, you know, if I was to use this as a trimming guide or just planning it out or just measuring it out after this was printed out, uh, I would be able to have an equidistant border on all sides. So it depends on what your end goal is with this. If you're going to be trimming it out just of a larger sheet of paper, place it wherever it's most convenient for you. Or if you're making an artistic decision of that you want this to be seen on 11, you know, on a 13 by 19 sheet, but that optically it's just slightly above center or wherever it's going to be, uh, you can make that decision. So at this point, let's say that I'm happy with this and I'm ready to. Um, that this is where I want it to be and it's how I want it to look and the measurements are all set. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and flatten this piece uh, and the way that I'm going to do that is by going over to my layers menu and with the little side menu, the little hamburger menu that's on the upper right hand corner of the layers menu, um, I get a drop down menu where I can go down to flatten image. And that just flattens the image. I mean, it takes those two, the background image and the uh, layer one that was there, now makes them into one single uh, image. 
The reason I would suggest doing this and then saving this as a TIFF file is the fact that um, when you send a layered Photoshop file to us, there's always the very unlikely possibility, but still the possibility that something could get moved around, that a layer might accidentally get turned off. Um, layers in a working file are just fine because you're still making decisions, but if it's something that you're committing to and that this is a final file and you're sending it out for somebody to print, it's always safest for you and the best idea to go ahead and flatten your file to send it out because then that way there's not layers um, that can be changed, that can be altered, that anything, nothing can be moved. It's just one single image and that's going to ensure that your print comes out exactly like you want it with no X factors. So now I'm going to go ahead and save this file and it doesn't have a name right now but this gives me a good opportunity to talk about a preferred way to name files for submitting them to the print center. So what I generally will ask people to do is that when they are saving files for us, it's always a good idea to give um, indication of who the file is for, um, what the file is, and then maybe an indication of the size that the file is printing. So with those parameters, I can say that uh, a logical way for me to save this would be to um, have my last name in here. So I'm going to type S-I-Z-E-R underscore swan poster underscore 13 by 19 dot tiff so this name is a understandable and logical name it has the name of the person who's who it's being printed for it has a small descriptor phrase in it and it shows the exact size of the poster that's being printed so that's all the information you need to know um, what I would say the requirement is is that when you're turning in files to us your file needs to include your last name that way it, there's no question um, and it's also there's no question of to who the the files being printed for who to contact if there's questions but it's also just a good idea to not be turning in files that are just generic numbers generated by your camera because you know we may have 10 files in there that are image.2754 and that's not really a smart way to do it and it's just not a good way to organize your files anyway so I would say it's a good idea for you to get into the habit of naming your files in a way that somebody other than you can understand so this kind of a name here my name small descriptive phrase the size and then saving it as a TIFF file that's ready to go now the reason I'm going to suggest saving it as a TIFF file is because a TIFF file is able to compress things down. When I go ahead and hit save, I get a secondary box and the secondary box gives me the option to do image compression. And um, the safest kind of uh, file compression that you can put onto a file is the one that's checked right here called LZW compression. And that is a lossless film, uh, lossless compression, meaning it doesn't de decay the image or distort it at all to make it small. So that's a very safe, um, safe compression to put onto images. Um, I'm going to set this up for the pixel order being uh, interleaved. That usually will default to that. And I'm going to make my byte order. I'm working on a Macintosh, so I'm going to go ahead and save it for Macintosh. So go ahead and click OK. And I'm just saving that to my desktop. So now I have made my document the exact size that of the, of the paper that's going to be printed on. Um, I have positioned my image exactly where I want it to be on the on that sized piece of paper. I have flattened my layers down so that there's no opportunity for that image to be moved or turned off or on. Um, and I've saved it as a TIFF file and I've given it a unique name that makes sense to the person who's going to be printing it. So that is that's really all you need to do. It's actually fairly simple. But what this also does is it ensures that when we're printing things that there's no opportunity for the software that we're printing it from to ask if the image is to be enlarged or reduced um, just by default. It is going to be exactly the size that you set it. So that means that it's more control for you so that you know exactly what you're getting. And it's more control for us because it means that we don't have to guess or try and figure out what you what size you want to have stuff if you're giving us a well-constructed file then it's 
100% all set and there's no guesswork and we can print it perfect the first time. So um, that is all you need to do. Um, as always, if there is ever a time where you're going to be doing prints and you have a question about how to print or how to set up files or what kind of paper is available, please come and see us at the, at the uh, print center. We're more than happy to help out. You can speak with myself or one of the other print technicians and we'll be more than happy to show you the papers that are available, the types of papers that are available, and we're also more than happy to help you out with technical specifications of how to set up your files and how to make them absolutely goof-proof and printable and perfect the first time. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you later. All right, take care.